And we're back, and we're playing some more Spine Calvate. Uh, mostly just because this is my very, very safe class to play, I think. Although I did just get destroyed by Mill. <laughs> All right, so we're up against um some kind of dwarf deck. This one was a little bit unusual, uh, but basically the important the important thing I really want to hit on in this video today is uh, the effectiveness of bleeding in the second round. And I've kind of talked about this here and there, but I think this video or this match in particular really showcases why it's so important to bleed out your opponent in round two, even if maybe your bleeding out tools aren't all that effective uh, against something like this deck in particular, which doesn't... I got the impression that the deck I'm going up against doesn't is almost similar to Spine Calvate and that while they do have some abundance of synergies and playing out one round, um, they can still do fine just on uh, other rounds. This was kind of like if there was such a thing as mid range in Gwent, both of our decks would more or less be basically that. We don't commit too hard on combos. We don't commit too hard on, uh, you know, whatever else. There's not really control, but there are disruption options. Uh, admittedly, I do come kind of make a mistake here in this round. I'm going second, I believe, right? Yeah, I think I'm going second. I forget. I don't know. Uh, but the basically the point is that my tempo was way too slow, and I'm actually going to get punished pretty hard for it. And this is uh, this leads into the importance of staying uh, up with your opponent's tempo. So as you can see, he played uh, one unit that a uh, combo unit, and then he played his three three for threes or whatever. Uh, and meanwhile, all I've played is an assassin, which is effectively negative tempo, uh, but it, it does take out a very vital piece of combo. And then I played a rot tosser, which is also very low in tempo. So he played a moderate tempo, high tempo, and then he's going to play a super high tempo with this play. And all the while, I've played a negative tempo and low tempo so there's this ginormous disparity between the two of us and this is further compounded by the fact that my raw tasha isn't actually going to hit anything and this kind of worries me because so that that flipped over card right that ambush card that effectively represents 14 strength and now i'm minus six strength minus uh 14 plus minus six it could be negative 20 so that's really difficult to pull uh to get in one card and he knows this, right? Like, I don't have a lot of options to get negative 20 in a single turn. So he's going to pass on me here, which is a really good pass by him. It forces me to go two cards down. Also, this gives him a really good opportunity to get out of round one. So he played it like the best I think he could have played right there. He got out of round one going first, going uh, and forcing the opponent to go down two cards. And because he doesn't really care about sticking around in, two, in a round that long, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty good for him. Meanwhile, I um, <laughs> I'm I either lose the round, same card, which is really good for him, or I go two cards down, which I think is a little bit better for me because this allows me to control the match. So if you have to decide between going same cards, or one card or two cards down, generally speaking, if you're playing a more, it depend it really depends on the deck, but generally speaking, I would say you're probably fine going two cards down if you know you can take advantage of controlling the match which i am going to be doing here in just a moment also it was really unfortunate that i wasn't able to draw into any more my impaired brigades which made these a little, little bit difficult i if i really committed to like using uh like uh, my leader ability into joaquim into impaired brigade uh that might have actually cleared the 20 points in one card but i wasn't really thinking to that that too much through uh, again, this is just kind of me playing on the casual letter. I don't play a lot of ranked. Uh, so mistakes like that happen, but something I need to be more careful of in the future, not allowing myself to have such a huge disparity in tempo. But at the same time, like I wasn't really expecting him to play a card like that too, but still, still a mistake. Uh, so I actually have two options here. I can just drive past him, force him to play this card, and then I can use um, Cantarella on the next round and then use something like... Uh, Menno, yeah, Menno. Um, there was an important part, point that I wanted to say here. What was it? I think it was something different. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, but basically, so I'm I'm just trying to bleed him out in this uh, in this round. Why am I doing this? Um, generally speaking, it's just a good idea to try and 
<sighs> this is hard to explain. Because I didn't actually go into bleeding the uh, into wanting to bleed him out for any very specific reason. I do end up getting a big payoff later, but basically the idea here is I'm trying to force him out. I'm trying to force his combo pieces out. Like, um, as you can see, he has a lot of these movement mechanics, right? Now, if I can, I want to try to get him to play those other. Uh, I don't know the name off, off the top of my head. The seven strength unit that deals two damage whenever something is moved. I really want him to get to play those because those can snowball really quickly. Also, the, the options that I'm playing here are all low tempo or not really all that useful. Like in the turning the spy, uh, that's OK, but that's not that great. He plays a really big combo piece out of his deck, which is really nice for me, which is what I wanted. And then I play a raw touch, which is also a low tempo play that he can play around. So it's effectively worthless. So I don't really mind giving it up and keep in mind in round two. So long as you're not too close to the last few cards in your hand, this point difference does not matter. They have to keep playing effectively no matter what, uh, so long as. They don't think that they can um, pass and then you won't be able to catch up. But around 20 strength with like six cards left, there's no way they're going to pass just yet. So you can keep playing and playing and playing. So now going to this one, I'm playing my my Peter. Now you, you may be thinking, why don't you just play the Peter on this five strength unit or save it for later? Uh, he's obviously a buffing or he has options to buff. But the thing is, he doesn't actually have a lot of buffing options. He more uses this card right here, the seven strength age unit to hit units. So he's not a buffing deck he is a damaging disruption deck so knowing this i use my peter and i use it on my own roach because i know i'm going to pull roach later with azir and so this is like three strength now and then three strength later as opposed to just making the point difference a little bit less in this round but that again that doesn't matter points don't matter in the single round so long as you know obviously you don't get passed on and then lose but i think generally speaking you should be able to avoid that Although it may be worth actually explaining that. I kind of take that for granted, actually. I guess I'm just never really in the, a position to where I play it more safe than sorry. So maybe I could have pushed that a little bit more. But generally speaking, I just want to back off. But also, this is really good. So he, he played a Gaven. He gets a little bit more control in round three. And if he has disruption options like I know he does, that's actually a pretty good play. Although it may have been better just to play it on the previous round just so I don't get the 12 strength. But again, he's playing a disruption deck. So um, even if I don't play any units for him to get disruption off, he still has something to hit. Although th that matters a whole lot more in a deck like Axeman and less so in a deck like this. <laughs> Some more movement options. I think he actually made a little bit of a mistake here. We'll, we'll see that later. Yeah, so this is a double edge uh, mistake, I think. So not only does he not get the buff on his own unit, but he also stacked my units, which is not what he wants. At first, I thought he was. Um, actually, there's a lot of anti synergy in his deck, isn't there? As you'll see here in a moment. But yeah, so basically, the idea is he was trying to get my units to line up for a Marigold Tailstorm, which is a very, very popular pick in this meta right now. Uh, but also, he has this card right here, this uh, this drought. Now, this is what the whole video was building up to. I didn't know he was going to play that drought. In fact, I wasn't. When he played it, I was like, "Wait, what? Why do you have? Why are you playing that card?" And obviously, uh, playing the deck that I do, I have no way to counter it. Um, and uh, I should explain further. Uh, when I say I have no way of playing around it, obviously, quote unquote, obviously, uh, I'm not actually playing any anti weather because that's not the kind of deck this is. It's more of a spying deck. Um, and also, I'm not running any first lights because, you know, I mean, who runs first lights <laughs> unless you're like spell a towel or something. So I have no way to counter this weather and I can't move my units either. So basically, I'm just going to have to suck it up and take this forward damage a turn and make sure not to play anything on this uh, range row. Now, going back into round two, I didn't expect this drought and yet I still bled him out because generally speaking, bleeding out is pretty safe, especially with a deck like this. And in doing so, I unwittingly actually prep myself for later because I made this round shorter, right? Uh, by make, by making this round five, ten, uh, five rounds shorter, that's um, five times four is 20. So I saved myself 20 strength or so by not just dry passing on the previous turn and bleeding out just a little bit, which made his gold weather a lot less effective. 
So I got a double synergistic effect. And also, when I said he made a mistake, I think he could have just had a even on a different row and still got hit and still get the effectiveness of um of a Miracle Tailstorm, which he'll play later. Oh, this is the point I want. So I stopped early and I was trying to think about what I was um. Wait, is that right? Let me look right in this back. Yes, okay. This is what I, earlier I paused and I was like, uh, when I had those three cards on the screen, I was trying to figure out what uh, point I wanted to make. And I remember what it is now. All right, so this point right here. So I just played my leader card and I see it's Yakim, Rod Tosser, and Roach. Now, if I play, obviously I'm not going to pick Roach, but if I pick Yakim, I'm just going to pull into a Rod Tosser, which is not necessarily something that I want. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to play the Rod Tosser first, get this out of my top three cards. Then I'm going to play my my other gold card so I can pull Joachim into something else. This effectively allows me to play a more stable play now. Wait, is that right? I'm playing a play I know what's going to happen now in favor of saving a, a card later in my deck and pull, digging deeper. But I'm going to dig that deep anyway. Hmm. Okay, so I think the point of the matter was is it wasn't necessarily that situation in which I actually got more benefit out. I think in general, I wanted to get the point across that by looking at the top three cards in my deck, I get to pull the card that I know I can effectively use and then by knowing that Roach is on the, uh, near the top of my deck, I can change my game plan so that I can use a gold card to get Roach out first and then do something else. I think that's the point I was trying to make. Not necessarily that situation, but in general, being able to use the... Um, me being able to gain information to change the way you play is very important. That's why I think Calvate is probably one of the most... It, one of, if not the single most powerful leader in the game because of things like that. And especially with synergistic effect with the rest of his deck. And also, as you can see, my Roach came out as 7 strength because my previous turn, it doesn't make that much of a difference in this match, in this particular instance, but it's still pretty good. So this is what I was talking about when I said I could I could have used my Spy for later, like in this round 3. Uh, because I still have Maureen, it's the difference between 7 strength and then a 12, uh, 11 strength. Um, so the effect of playing a, a Spy on the third round is mitigated. Due to the fact that I have uh, Menno. I, does that call him Maureen? I'm at Menno. Also kind of a relatively minor thing, but make sure to when you're playing against like a cold weather, of course, you want to try and stack your units on the same row if you can. Because this Imperial Brigade is already getting hit by the drought, I could just go ahead and place things on here. Also, another thing, by bleeding out... So he still could have had a really good effect by using drought into Marigold's Hailstorm, even though it's a little bit uh, anti-synergistic. Um, but because I got his, uh, the eighth strength dwarf, Zoltan, because I got his Zoltan out in the second round, he can't use his Zoltan here to move all these units. And also I took away the possibility of him being able to get the synergistic effect off. Also, I specifically targeted this to be, uh, uh, to go spying instead of the, one of these units to go spying because I know I want to try and kill off that, uh, combo piece. Similarly, you know, obviously don't go for road. Uh, Joaquin. And then here comes the Miracle Tailstorm. I thought I was going to lose here. <laughs> you know, you think 37 straight up, what one card in the game could actually do that? And it's pretty much Miracle Storm. But I just barely come out alive. So for a difference of one turn won me this game. If I hadn't... Push round two as much as I did, I would not have won this. Also, I was able to push round two like that because I had gone two cards down to win round one. Now, I didn't know he was going to play Drought. I didn't know he was going to play Miracle Toe Storm. But still, I used the power of my deck to keep the round short and be in control to allow myself just to get myself, free. even if he didn't have either of those cards. And it's something else. I still gave myself freedom to be able to react and mitigate certain effects. Now, this isn't always 100% right. Uh, and it's, conversely, it's not always 100% wrong, but generally speaking, I think being able to give yourself freedom to act is better than not giving yourself the freedom to act. 
Also, I shouldn't have made this mistake in the first round by not keeping up with this tempo, which effectively made me go two cards down instead of something just like one card down. And since he was going first, I had the advantage, but I didn't push it hard enough. I was thinking he was going to try and go for uh, go for a hard round one, but I was wrong. All right. Thanks for watching.